place where the next generation of motocross talent will take to the big stage for the very first time, where the likes of Jeffrey Hurlings and Ken Roxon first shot to stardom. With 200 riders on three different classes of bike, the FIM Junior World Championship is the most prestigious junior race in the world. Welcome to Leno. Leono in the Walloon region of Belgium plays host to this brand new venue where the best of the youth will take on one another for the 65, 85 and 125cc world titles. In the smallest class, the favourites must be the gaggle of American racers. Fresh off a summer of national riding, they will have their work cut out against Jet Lawrence of Australia and the newly crowned European champion Nikita Kucherov of Russia. In the 85s, Jago Geertz and Kim Sebasti will be among the favourites alongside Garrett Marchbanks of the USA. And in the 125s, we'll have to see if a rider can step up to challenge the dominance of the 2012 85cc world champion and newly crowned 125 European champion Brian Shu on this technical Leono track. the first time we've seen this track in the famous region of Bastogne. It's had a lot of work put into it over the summer to make sure it's in perfect condition for these two days of racing. And here to show us around the track is Conrad Muse and Garrett Marchbanks. Hi, I'm Garrett Marchbanks. I am here racing for Team USA and about to go check out the track. Hi, I'm Comrade Muse, I ride 125cc, and I'm about to take you a lap of Leonu. It's a fairly long start straight here at Leonu, slightly uphill, and the first turn is 90 degrees. A short straight down into turn two, which as you can see, 180 degree, turns back on itself. Might be one or two problems through there. Immediately out of the second turn, over a hump into turn three. It's as tight as that. Conditions on Saturday, very, very muddy indeed. Sweeping up through turn four, over this little crest here. And then we're into the rhythm sections. A series of step ups and step downs. If the circuit dries out, that'll be quite an interesting place on the circuit to really test the rider's metal. Swinging out through this left hander. Again, slightly uphill, over two giant rollers. Eventually hard on the brakes into this very tight right hander. Dropping downhill over the tabletop. Not the biggest one on the track, but you'll be landing hard on the brakes to make the left before going back uphill over a series of rollers again. And a fairly long straight, this one. There's your first roll up, two more to follow into one of the big tabletops, possibly the longest one on the track. And again, landing hard on the brakes, into the left, dropping downhill, over another tabletop jump here, before tightening up into the right-hander. Exit the right, you can see it's banked out to the left-hand side, giving the riders plenty of options to pass. A long drag here, again, a couple more big rollers. Then we swing left, over another tabletop, again, slightly downhill. Nice and short, that one. Hard on the gas. A little bit of old school here into that roller. And then continuing on. Right the way down the jumps there just to slow the speed down a little bit. Through this left. Again, fairly long that turn. And eventually tightening up. And then through this right-hander, you see a series of waves. Switching through the left-hander, continuing on. Over another short jump into this left-hander. Then we swing back towards the finish line, the Scott finish line, tabletop jump just here. We land in the left-hander, we turn left across the front of the start straight into what would be the final turn on the track, past pit lane, and then into this left and we rejoin the track at turn one. So let's take a closer look at who and what to look out for in the three classes and start with the smallest first, the 65cc category. About 95% of the field will use the KTM 65SX with a few opting for Husqvarna or Kawasaki versions. 
This class is aimed at riders older than 8 but below about 1.6 metres tall as the low seat height makes it easier for even the smallest kid to ride but tough as legs and arms start to grow. This bike actually belongs to Joe Shimoda of Japan. He's with Amy Dargan now. So Joe, I hear this is not the first time you've been over to the Junior World Championships. Yeah, it's 2013 MXGP 65. I got fifth over horror and, and I best time race too. And I hear you've been doing some racing over in the US. Yeah, at Rella Lynn, I overhaul. I got fourth and fourth stock and modified. I got third overhaul. Yeah. That's pretty good going. So, what's your goal for this weekend? I like to be the podium for FIM Junior or MXGP. Thanks to FIM Asia, Maki, my mom and dad, Peter, my sponsors, boss, KDM Japan, and happy racing. Thanks, Joe. Right, let's see how Joe gets on in 65 race one. Jeremy Ryan nearest the camera, but it was Nikita Kucherov, the 2.42 European 65 champ, that grabbed the foxhole shot. Jeremy Ryan and Jet Reynolds, number seven and number nine, battled over the lead with Kucherov in third. As they came down past pit lane, just behind them, number 304, Gerard Congos of Spain, Jet Lawrence, Australia, was fourth. Alain Pent and Christian Sprimanis rounded out the top six. Joe Shimoda, 47, was down in seventh from Japan. Jet Reynolds, though, number nine of the USA, was soon out in front as Jeremy Ryan, number seven, and Jet Lawrence, 49, battled over third. Kucherov, 242, lost out to Shimoda. The two Americans of Ryan and Reynolds battled for the lead as their teammate, Carter Bees, number eight, fought on in 11th. Back up front, though, Reynolds started to pull clear, leaving Ryan to deal with the Aussie. Jet Lawrence, number 49, in the fight for second position. Lawrence eventually made the pass to go second as Reynolds looked confident out front as the battle for second continued behind him. This was that battle for second, quite an intense affair out on track. Behind them in fourth was Joe Shimoda, Spaniard though, Congos 304, he took fifth. Kucherov, 2.42, dropped back to an eventual sixth position. But then there was drama as Jet Reynolds fell from the lead, handing the advantage to Jet Lawrence, the number 49 rider from Australia in the closing stages of the race. And despite the efforts of Reynolds, it was Lawrence who went on to take victory in moto number one. Reynolds was second, Jeremy Ryan was third. So there's your classification from race one. Lawrence, Reynolds, Ryan, Shimoda, Kongos, and Kuchera. cc race two and this time it was a whole shot for jeremy ryan number seven of the usa with jared congos joe shimoda and jet lawrence close behind that's what it looks like from buried down in the pack rocks roosting up into the faces of the riders but it was joe shimoda number 47 of japan who wasted no time getting to the front as jeremy ryan tried to keep pace in second Race one winner, Lawrence, was pushed back into sixth place. On a GoPro here as he tries to thanks Maxim Kryev for Russia. Hey, Cars, Marcus and Ellen's getting passed by Kryev and then Lawrence soon on the move as he battles with Jeremy Ryan and Carter Bees of the USA. These guys battling over second. There was a mistake there from Bees. That allowed the Aussie to close in on second. Shimoda wasn't hanging around though. 
He was up front and soon pulling clear of his rivals on the number 47 machine. Lawrence, 49, tried to secure second. Jeremy Ryan, number seven, pushed the Australian all the way to the flag in third. Number eight of Carter Bees improved on his first race 11 to claim fifth behind Jet Reynolds, number nine of the USA. In the closing stages, the rain started to fall, making conditions very difficult indeed. But the Japanese rider, Joe Shimoda, number 47, proved to be the master. Horrible conditions for the 65 guys, but not for this guy, number 47, Joe Shimoda. He was in control and would go on to take victory by more than 20 seconds over Jet Lawrence with Jeremy Ryan, five seconds further adrift. And that was your classification. Shimoda, Lawrence and Ryan, the top three. And your overall FIM 65cc world champion is Jet Lawrence. Shimoda second, Ryan is third. So here's your podium then. Jeremy Ryan third for the USA. Joe Shimoda second of Japan. Jet Lawrence, your overall winner from Australia. You get yourself a Scott mountain bike as well. And the medals presented by Tony Skillington. Jet, you are our junior 65 world champion. How does that feel? It feels awesome. It's my first time coming over here, so it's some track experience what it's like over here, so it's pretty fun. How did you find the races? It was pretty hard in the end, but I got through it, and the track was fun, and I loved to, I loved to race with other people. Welcome back to Belgium, and it's time to step it up a class to the biggest of the little bikes in the 85cc category. Physically, it's more to handle than the 65 with a higher seat, bigger wheels, longer suspension travel, and about 10 extra kilos of weight for the slightly older riders to muscle around. Once again, it's KTM who provide the majority of the bikes in the class, and this one in particular belongs to the KTM factory rider, Kim Sebasti from Finland. So Kim, tell me how you started riding motocross. Yeah, I started when I was three years old. I started to ride with Quad and yeah, then when I get four, I started to ride with uh, PV Yamaha 50 and then I get KTM 50 when I was uh, six, five years old and yeah. Then I started to ride and I, I wanted to be good in the sport and I, I started to train and ride Europeans when I was eight and yeah, now we are here in uh, 2014 already and yeah, now I'm trying to do my best and yeah, we see. Awesome. Do you look up to any of the older riders? Yeah, I'm looking for Jeffrey. He's running very well and he has been champion two times and now he's injured, which is not so nice. And yeah, he hurt himself with 85 CC in the Everton Friend race. But yeah, we see it's, is he getting the title again. And he's a great sand rider. And yeah, I would like to be like him. Well, let's see how Kim gets on in 85 race one. with Garrett Marchbanks as he heads up the start straight in 85cc race one and it's Ron van der Moosdijk of the Netherlands who grabs the Fox hole shot. On board with Marchbanks as his teammate Brock Pappy crashes out going into turn two. Up front though, the 39, Moosdijk is first and Caleb Grothers of Australia battling for the lead there on the number 60 KTM. Back on board with Mark Banks. He gets held up in the turn here behind Revo Dankers. And Luca Milec and Dylan Woodcock, 600, go by. Frantic action in 85s. Brother Soap was soon in the lead ahead of Brian Moreau of France. And the Moosdijk had dropped to third with Mikael Harrop and Taylor Hamill rounding out the top five. Forty-five. 
Kim Sebasti worked his way into third behind Grothers and Moreau as Taylor Hamill, 575, came under attack from Fichetti on the 22 in the battle for sixth. Leaders duped it out at the head of the field. Brock Pepe struggled with the conditions on the number six machine. He fell back to 21st, and it wasn't much better for his teammate, Connor Munnelix, the number five, who could only manage 14th. Van der Moosdijk would eventually pass Hamel, and go on to fourth, but the win would go to Caleb Brothers of Australia. Brian Moreau was second, Kim Sebasti of Finland was third in what was an epic 85cc race one. So race one then, Brothers, Moreau, Savasti, Mushtaik and Gitch, your top five. <laughs> Horrible conditions at the start of 85cc race two. But it was Mikael Harrop of Denmark who grabbed the foxhole shot this time around on the 722 machine. Caleb Grothers was in there in third, trying to find a way past the Portuguese rider, Paolo Lugana, for second, as Gianluca Fichetti of Italy held fourth ahead of Sebasti of Finland. The rain and muddy conditions really started to cause problems as the race wore on. Italian number 22 for Ketty held fourth for a while. But up front, Mikel Harrop, the 722, looked comfortable and began to pull clear of his rivals. That's your leader there, Harrop. But for Kim Savasti, 485, he had to work through traffic. First, he found a way past Calvin Fonvielle, the 211 of France, as he went in pursuit of a top three finish. For Ketty, though, he fell from fourth to an eventual seventh as Lugana, the number 50, came under pressure from Sebasti for third. Connor Mullenix of the USA, number five, looked more than comfortable in fourth place, but Harrop was on a mission in first on the 722 KTM. Barely put a wheel wrong, and he was racing as if it was dry. And it was Harrop who won race two. Sebasti was second. The Ghana was third. There's your classification. Mullenix was fourth. Fonvier was fifth. And the overall vote, Kim Sebasti is your 85cc world champion. Brothers second. Harrop gets on the podium with that fine race win and finishes third overall. She podium here then. Mikael Harrop in third. Caleb Brothers second. Kim Sebasti of Finland, your overall winner. Another Scott Mountain Bike presented to your winner, Kim Sevesti. Gets a gold plate and a gold medal as well. Kim, you narrowly missed out on a European title a few weeks back in Finland, but a world title must feel pretty great. Yeah, it's feeling really great after a difficult weekend here in muddy conditions. So, first heat, I took a bad start. I had bad qualifying. I crashed two times in the second race, so I'm really happy for this title. And yeah, we'll see how it's going next year. It's the FIM Junior World Championship in Belgium, and this is the big bike class, the full-size 125cc machine, that up until a few years ago was part of the World Championship proper. With Revy and Peaky 125 single-cylinder engines that can produce nearly as much peak power as an MX2 bike, these bikes are not for the faint of heart, and it often takes a year or two for riders that move from 85 to get comfortable with the extra size and power. One man who took his time and is now this year the man to beat, that's the 2012 85cc world champion, Ryan Shu on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki Europe machine. So Brian, last year at the Junior World Championships, a mechanical failure kept you off the podium. However, a lot has changed this year for you. Yeah, um, last year I had uh, many problems in, the, problems in the World Championship, but um, like this year, uh, last weekend I just won the European Championship and uh, um, I feel good uh, that I'm I feel strong to come into the World Championship, so I hope this time will be uh, better uh, challenges. Well, let's see if Brian can add to his silverware in 125 Race 1.
125s burst into life. On board with David Herbertrope as he charged uphill and it was Anthony Bordon, 945, who grabbed the foxhole shot but knocks belong because Brian Shoup charged down the inside and took the lead. As Lorenzo Rivera fell on lap one, Brian Shoup started to pull clear. Behind him, Osland, 161, Shaleka, 131, Herberto and Renkens rounded out the top five. But up front, it was the newly crowned European 125 champ, Brian Shoup, number 81, who was looking solid. Back at the second, Alvin Osland started to take control as Josiah Natsuki lost out to Alex Fry of the USA as he was pushed back to seventh. The 183 of Gilberto Lucurio of Venezuela was third. Brian Shu was once again dictating the race. Oslin was second. Fry eventually placed in fifth on the number one machine of the USA. A hard ride for the young American. Fifth is all he can manage at the end of the first race. Brian Hsu, though, he was supreme and supremely confident as he raced towards the chequered flag to win moto number one. Behind him was Osland, Lucurcio was third, Herbertro and Fry top five. Two five race two, Brian Hsu from gate one charged up the hill and it was he who pulled the fox hole shot. Behind him though, Chalon Tennant of the USA crashed out in spectacular fashion on the number two machine. Brian Hsu once again started to demoralize his rivals. Behind him though, the battle for second was between David Herbertro on the 338, having Osland on the 161, and they battled to stay ahead of Thomas Schleker and Gilberto Lucurcio, the 183 from Venezuela. Even Baranoff made his way to the edge of the top five as he went after Herbertro and Lucurcio. But once again, Brian Hsu was in total control at the head of the field. Osland felt the heat from Lucurcio as they battled for second. Now the circuit absolutely prime. These guys really able to show their wares to the rest of the world. Behind Brian Shoup, the Curcio 183 forced his way into second, leaving Osland on the floor. Osland remounted, picked himself up in third. Behind him, even Baranoff on the 372 got himself into fourth ahead of David Herberto, the 338, the French rider. No one was stopping this guy, Brian Shoup, on the number 81 Rockstar Energy Suzuki. Start to finish win, he led every single one of the laps in the second moto. And it was the German, Brian Shoup, who raced to his second victory of the day to secure the FIM 125cc Junior World title. Confirmation of the race two result then. Shoup, Le Curcio, Oslan, Baranov and Herbertro. And Shoup is your world champion in 125. Le Curcio second, Oslan is third. So your podium then, Avin Austin, third of Sweden, Gilberto Lucurcio, second of Venezuela, and Brian Sue of Germany. Your overall winner, got himself a gold plate, also a Scott mountain bike. And he's your new champion. Brian adding another title to what has been an absolutely fantastic year for you. How do you feel? Yeah, it's a great, uh, great year because like, um, Last week I won the European Championship and this, after that week I won the World Championship and it's, uh, I'm so happy to uh, win this title and uh, uh, actually my second moto, in my second moto the start was so amazing I just got out of this, uh, the start and I checked out and uh, I'm so happy I just want to thank to my uh, team Rockstar and Suzuki Europe and uh, my parents, my family and, uh, and my other sponsors, thank you very much. Well congratulations Brian for this world title, well done. Thank you. Wet, windy 
but fantastic. The 2014 FIM Junior World Championship is over for another year and we have three new world champions. And obviously Team USA take another nation's win here in Belgium. Join us next year for more fun and action.